Hi everyone, I hope you're well. Mary here. Today is the 5th of February, 2020. And um, last night, I was at one of my meetings and someone said, um, if there's a God or a higher power, why do bad things happen in the world? And I tried to explain about duality and, you know, you don't know what you want until you see what you don't want. And, um, they weren't getting it. <laughs> anyway, I thought I would just do a reading on that. So my question is to Spirit, why do bad things happen? Um, why is there suffering in the world? Um, why do bad things happen to good people? So please show me, Spirit, why... Why is there suffering? Why do good, bad things happen to good people? So uh, I'm just going to pull four cards from the tarot. Thank you. Thank you. We have, um, sorry, the first card up is Judgment followed by the strength card. Okay. And the angels, please show me why do bad things happen to good people? Why do bad things happen to people? Ooh, the tower. Why do bad things happen? Why is there suffering in the world? And the Five of Cups. This is really interesting because we have three major arcana out of four cards. All right, so why do bad things happen to good people? Why is there suffering in the world? The, wor the first card that came up is the Judgment card. So we live in a dualistic reality um, in this dimension, right? And in order to know what we don't, what we do want, we have to see what we don't want. So um, sometimes events happen to show us collectively um, to help us make a judgment, right? So um, I'm being shown 9/11. So on 9/11 in my life, I can only speak for myself. Um, it was a wake-up call. 9-11 was a huge wake-up call for me. I kind of reassessed my life and where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do with my life. And then I made decisions accordingly. Um, not like the day after, it took some time, but like I made some decisions and made um, some huge life changes, right? Um, so I kind of judged my own life based on the event of 9-11, so a collective event. Um, these events bring courage and strength uh, to people that they didn't know that they had. So if someone's life was perfect all of the time, how would they know their own strength? Like say you were just handed everything, you never had to work for anything. How would you know that you had an inner strength? You probably wouldn't, right? So things that um, suffering, um, although is horrible, it helps us to know our own inner strength. So I'm being shown energetic frequency of light or frequencies um, like courage and fear are two frequencies. They're actually the same frequency. It's just that because we are in a dual or polarized dimension, the frequency has to go through our veil of consciousness 
or perspective and we label it either good or bad, fear or courage, um, that sort of thing. So um, in order to know our own courage, sometimes it takes an event in our life where there has to be some sort of suffering. Okay, so we may have this tower moment. Um, and you know, spirit often gives us little hints or our higher self gives us hints or guidance along our path, but we don't always hear it, or we're not quiet enough to hear it, or we're hearing it, but we don't want to hear it because, you know, we know everything and we have free will and um, all of that nonsense. <laughs> but um, if you don't get the messages, you're going to have a tower moment. And in these moments, sometimes, you know, bad things happen or people suffer. Um, I know people who have had cancer and have beaten cancer and it changed their lives, right? People go through addiction and beat addiction and it changes their lives. So they go down into some sort of suffering. Um, almost like the dark night of the soul. They go down to a suffering in order to be to shoot up into a higher vibration of consciousness or um, headed towards enlightenment. So that's how um, that's how a lot of people find um, their spirituality is from going through a period of suffering. Um, my suffering was my alcoholism my rock bottom, so to speak, and having to surrender to my higher power and ask for help. And then I was ready to receive, right? So sometimes we have to go through these tower moments to our rock bottom so that we can bounce back up to a more enlightened state. It's all about expansion. That's what we're here to do. We're all fragments of God. Um, and we are expanding our consciousness. And that's why God is ever-changing and there's this evolution. Okay, so the last card that I pulled was the Five of Cups. So the Five of Cups it's a card about where your focus is. Is your focus on the spilled cups or is your focus on the full cup? So you can focus on the suffering or you can focus on what the suffering births. So um, when there's suffering <laughs> or these tower moments in your life, it creates a rebirth for you. Many people have had cancer have told me that it was like they were reborn. So, um, and, and many addicts also, same, it's like they're reborn. And I'm not talking about rebirth in a Christian sort of way. Um, I'm talking about it being reborn from a soul expansion level. So the, I hope that explains it. Um, thank you, Spirit, because I, I think these cards really do help to explain it, and um, hopefully I did them justice. <laughs> okay. You know, I can tell you when, when Kobe Bryant died, I went through this period of complete devastation. I was like, oh, my God, this young father, he had everything, such a wonderful man. And, um, but I was able to bounce back probably within a day or less because I knew there was a higher purpose. Um, when celebrities pass, it's usually a higher purpose because it brings the collective consciousness together. Um, but I was able to get a new, to a neutral point or a zero point and get back to a higher frequency. When Princess Diana passed, and when was that? Let's see, in the 90s? I feel like it was around 97. 
um, when she passed, it took me months to get over that. I didn't know Princess Diana, but I felt like I grew up with her, and, and I felt like I knew her because I had read about her, and she was in all these photographs, and, you know, as unfair as it was to her, um, I ate that stuff up at the time, and it really upset me that she passed. Um, but when a celebrity passes, um, it unites us, even though it's in a period of sadness, it's still the collective consciousness coming together, right? And um, more and more these events are happening on the planet um, where people are leaving the planet, um, like the coronavirus, people are leaving the planet, but it's my feeling that they kind of, you know, on a soul level agree to this. And so in a way are sacrificing themselves to bring the conscious collectiveness conscious collective together in order to bring a mass awakening on the planet. Yeah. I think that's what this is about. You know, um, the, uh, the fires in Australia, the, the coronavirus, um, celebrity deaths. These are all ways that kind of collectively we all come together. Um, and people are going to be waking up in 2020 in huge masses, in huge numbers, and um, it's all part of the awakening process. It's a lengthy process. <laughs> um, I wish it didn't take so long, but it is what it is. All right, so I'll just pull a card from Amanda Ellis's deck, and we'll see what guidance we have here. Okay, this is interesting. It's the void. Retreat, rest, and pause. So this void looks to me like a portal. So when these things happen, um, suffering happens on the planet, and we go down um, sometimes to our deepest sadness or depression, anxiety, to a really low, dense vibration. <laughs> this is funny. I don't know if you guys are going to see it. What I got a picture of was, um, you know those machines, pinball machines? And then and the pinball shoots up and then it falls into a hole? It falls into a hole. It falls into the void. So it falls into that hole, and then it makes its way back down, and then you shoot the pinball way back up. So um, when you go down into like a rock bottom or to your lowest, it's a way to shoot you back up to um, towards enlightenment. That's the image I got. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys might get something different. But it could be that um, when there's suffering, um, sometimes you have to take a step back, rest, reflect. Just like after 9-11, I kind of took a step back and just looked at my life like, is this really where I want to be before I die? <laughs> you know, so you make other decisions in, in, this, um, in this void. Okay. I hope this makes sense to you all. Um, if so, please like, subscribe, and share. Remember that we're all in this together. You're a light worker. You're here for a reason. Try to hang on to that light. There's people around you who are awake and some not awake. So don't be, um, don't judge. Just accept people where they are and hold space for them and be that light um, as they go through their awakening process. All right, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.